you did? Well, I don't think that's possible. <laughs> Well, first off, the weather, right? Perfect. It was, you know, 70s-ish with the breeze. So, I mean, I just, I, you know, was talking to Clowney. I was like, now, you've been keeping this a secret from everybody. And he's like, I've been trying to tell people about the Carolinas. Like, here we are. So, anyway, um, it was great to be out there. And then, of course, for me, just my first practice as a head coach. Um, and this is just, this is just uh, fun for me because the first team I coached was at my alma mater, Carson High School, black and blue. And we had the blue jerseys. That was our, you know, we're out in the blue jerseys, and it's just kind of like a, you know, pinch yourself kind of moment. Um, and so surreal for sure. But again, to do it with with uh, some guys that I have familiarity with, um, saw a lot of proud proud big brother, you know, looks from some of the guys. And then um, to be able to be out there with uh, Ajero and the defensive guys and bringing this whole thing together, um, certainly a really cool day for me. Dave, um, you had close to full attendance out there. I think Pinheiro, Hill, and, and Chase were the only guys that, that we didn't see. Um, how important was that for you as you guys start this program? Which part? Just having All close the to full Yeah. Yeah, it's been really encouraging, you know, just the, the for guys to show up and to, and to show excitement about what we're doing. And, and I think it's, a, um, I think it's a, a give and take with the coaching staff as far as making it a good time when they're here. You know, it's it's enrichment. You know, it's entertaining, um, hopefully. And then, um, you know, it's just really intentional. Trying to be respectful of their time, maximizing those windows, um, so that it just is not just oh, here we go again with this off-season program. We're trying to give them something to be excited about. Um, and uh, so, I've I've really appreciated the attendance so far. What does the process look like when you watch tape from last year and yeah. you identify some things that Bryce that you would like to see Bryce Young do? Yeah. How does that translate from the film room to today at practice? What's that kind of process like? Yeah. I, so to start off, you know, I kind of started the same place um, every year on the first day of drills. So today happened to be that day. Um, I was kind of bopping around. Will Harriger, our QB's coach, he had them over there. It tickles me to watch him teach Andy Dalton how to get into a stance to take a ball from under center. But I love it because it's just like even Andy, yeah, even you and Bryce, you know, and Baker and Gino and Russ, first things first, right? Let's get a nice stance, feet underneath your shoulders, stagger the left foot to your instep. Okay, now let's crouch down, get your shoulders up so you can see both sides of the field. Um, and I think there's something cool about that, and I, and I never want to lose that part of it for the guys so that it never becomes boring. Never get bored with the basics. There's a great Kobe Bryant video uh, if you want to YouTube something later. It's fantastic, one of the greatest of all times talking about that. So um, it, it, there's a process. There's a QB school that he's going through, and as we do it, um, the things he needs to specifically improve on, that kind of like uh, that's the lens that we look at stuff with. So. How do you, you not mentioned. overwhelm him, though? What's that? How do you not overwhelm him, though, in these moments? Like, how do you got to go drum base? It's trust the QB school, the process we've taken all the guys through. And so that's, we know that that's a lot, um, but we know that it's, it leads to great results. And so we're just trusting it one day at a time. And then we just kind of add different layers of concepts, protections, runs, tool belt answers, things like that. We will continue to add. We'll do that twice, the whole thing through the spring. We'll hit it again twice through training camp and preseason. Um, so that's four times totally going through the whole system by the time we get to playing uh, games in the season. So what's the first lesson Bryce needs to learn in the quarterback school? Oh, we always start with the basics. Here's my stance. Here's the, here's the uh, footwork inventory. So these are how we talk about the language. We have five types of reads. Here are those reads. Um, so it's really just about the basics, you know, just giving him the language and I think that if we can get all on the same page with the language again new offense new terms so it all starts there and if we can communicate if we speak the same language we can build anything pretty fast when did it kind of dawn on you walking out there that this was real you were going to walk out on the field as a head coach in the NFL for the first time yeah, off and on all day, you know, even just kind of that window right before we're going to practice. And, and that's kind of that's always been my window to still a quick workout. Um, and then as I went into the weight room, um, Pete would always be in there. Coach Carroll, Pete would always be in there. He'd be doing bands. He'd be working mobility stuff, stretching a little bit. He'd get his quick little 15, 20 minute workout in. 
And so I walk in there and I start to do my workout and I was just like, you know, it was just an eerie, this was the time where I kind of run into him before we're going out. So one of those, and then, and then just kind of walking around the gate, going out there, seeing the guys out there early with jerseys and they're waiting for me to blow the whistle. I got to blow the whistle by the way. So that was cool. So I don't know if I'll use it again, but I got, I'm the guy with the whistle. So that was fun. You guys have seemed intentional, you, you and Dan, about wanting to Bryce and, and the world to know this isn't just about him. Yeah. In your discussions with him, did you ever get the sense that he kind of did take a, a, a lot of that on last season? I don't know if I could read that, but I definitely feel his excitement for just having an offense where we're just trying to build, we're trying to build all the information so that everybody has to do their part. And he feels that for sure from us. Hopefully that's been really intentional, like you said. Um, and hopefully I can see him just kind of like, they're not coming in here to try to, you know, ask me to be the hero or all these things. You know, they're just asking me to do my part. Here's the system. Here's how you fit into the system. Dave, uh, Xavier Leggett recently did an interview where he talked about how well you guys hit it off yeah. uh, in his 30 visit. From, a, from the difference between a being a position coach and a head coach, yeah. how do you handle those uh, 30, 30 visits maybe differently? And how much can you really tell them about potentially their role when they come here? For me, what I'm trying to get out of those interactions, I want to hear a guy tell their story. I think it says a lot about their self-awareness. I think it says a lot about how, how they can achieve their goals and how quickly they can achieve their goals by being able to like really systematically um, in an organized way, tell their life story, tell where they've been, the hardships, when the light went on for them. I remember I was a sophomore and this coach was at one of our games and he came and talked to me afterwards and I realized, oh, this is real. Because they all say like, I've been dreaming about being an NFL player since I was six. That's the generic answer they all say, but it's the guys who, who can capture like those specific moments in their life when it's like, oh, this is real, you know? And some of them are honest and will tell you it's been in the last two years, you know? Um, so again, talking to Xavier, talking to guys like that, now I'm looking for them, not to just give me one word answers, but can they actually flesh out their story? Dave, how important was it to upgrade this offensive line as you did, spent a lot of money and, and Deontay as well, wide receiver? To, to kind of help Bryce, how, how important were those things to you guys? Yeah, a uh, complete team, right? So let's build the offense the way that I see it. And then, um, before I go into like the specifics of it, our message, my message has been, I want to try to challenge our roster every year. I want to challenge every single spot. And so as the draft happens and as we see there's so much talent, you know, at different positions as we see it, I don't think you can ever really afford to just say like, okay, I think we're set here. We're good there. So we don't need to go there with it. I think you just add great players to your team. Um, and that's not just like a take the best available philosophy. It's just when you have great players and a lot of people are on the same page, let's challenge our team. It makes everybody better. Um, so I'll say that first, you know, but then um, that inside out mentality, you know, it starts up front. I've always believed that about football. It starts on the offensive line and the defensive line, you know, and so getting those critical pieces like that, those were the first moves we made was up front on offense and defense, you know, and and of course, you know, um, just the transition of of guys, you know, as we go through the roster, we go through changes, um, making sure that we have that inside out mentality um, has been a real key focus for us. Dave, like, uh, like Adam thing, like how important do you, or how much do you lean on him? How crucial is he to kind of facilitate? You know, everything from big message to details of what you're trying to do. Yeah, really important. You know, guys like Adam, and you got, you know, Shaq, Derek Brown, uh, Ashawn Robinson, you know, offensively, you got, you know, Moten, you got uh, Corbett, a lot of guys who have been in a lot of off seasons and different camps. So even as I try to challenge kind of like the, here's how it's always been done from an NFL standpoint, organizationally. I'm trying to challenge all those models. At the same time, I want to make sure I'm listening to the coaches, the guys that have been around a long time, and the players, and say, how did this work out? How did this feel? Is this a good time for the workout? Would you rather it be this window? So just taking a lot of feedback from those guys um, and really just trying to empower them and give them a voice, you know? Um, 
so that I'm not blindsided by anything that we could do better. I just don't want everybody, well, I just thought this is what we're doing, so let's just all walk this way. You know, let's let's all look at this whole thing and, and try to find best practices all the way across the board. Dave, back. going back to Deontay Johnson, yeah. what have you observed of um, uh, his early connection with Bryce uh, this early on? Not much. I mean, they played catch. They probably threw about five or six balls. So I'll tell you, but I will be able to tell you more as we get into competitive settings. Um, but I am excited about the connection, though. When you had that conversation with Bryce about self-awareness and all that, anything that he said or what did he say that, that was a clue to you that this is when he understood himself and what his goals were? Yeah, well, we had a formal meeting with him um, at the Combine. He was coming out. And I was like, you fix something. I told him, I said, from the end of the season to the playoffs, you fix something. I want you to talk about it and tell him what it was. And he talked, and, and then he talked about um, narrowing his base and getting to the point where he can stay compact and tall and be able to deliver the throws. And so it was a really cool connection between he and I because I just showed him my notes and I said, and then he just like, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, he just, but it was really me seeing like, is this guy the, of, aware of what his deficiencies are, what he needs to work on? And that was a classic test for guys. If they're not aware of things that they're holes, you know, if they're not aware of things they need to improve on, um, then I think there's, that doesn't mean they can't ever have it, but I've just noticed the guys that do have the awareness, they get further faster um, because they're constantly working on those things. You're, yeah, this was before. Dick, when, when you're installing this new offense, yeah. you mentioned watching Will work with the quarterbacks, and it was almost like he was an extension of you. Like, how yes. important is that alignment yeah. when you're trying to get everybody on the same page to, to kind of build this thing from scratch? Yeah, it's huge, right? Because what we can't have is double coaching, you know, because then it's just it. Uh, we're stealing bandwidth from our players if we're double coaching. We all got to be saying the same thing, and then you're just reinforcing instead of like stealing attention away. So um, that's, that's been a really critical part, um, especially for me, especially with Bryce, especially on the offensive side as we're starting something new um, that we work through it. Are we gonna be perfect? No. And that's where we say, guys, said this wrong, gotta change this. We're also trying to show them, guys, it's okay to do stuff wrong here. Let's talk about it, let's fix it, so. so just like yeah. as you work through that process, do the coaches talk and get of, of one mind yeah. and then take that to the players? Is that yeah. kind of what? <clears throat> Absolutely. And that's what we started from the minute we got our staff assembled. It was like, let's build a new playbook. This is what we call the things, okay? Whatever you called it somewhere before, we got to change your language. You know, here we go. Let's put the fine box in the middle of the table right here. So if you use that word again, pay the box. No, we don't have a fine box. But, you know, we just kind of, you know, rib each other a little bit, make it playful and be like, there goes that term again. It's like, this is what we call it. So, Dave, um, there's been a lot made of the Mike Evans, DK size thing. Yeah. You predict in particular. But you've had Richardson, you've had Golden Tate, you've had a bunch of different body Doug types. Doug Baldwin, Tyler Lockett. Yeah, yeah, all those guys. Why is it important to have all those different body types in, in an offense like yours? I wouldn't say it's important. I just love great players, and they come in all shapes and sizes. And then you just you modify what you're doing. You don't change the words of what you're saying, but within our system, their talents will make us call plays more. Um, this, it may be a 16 yard route for DK. It might be a 14 yard route for Tyler Lockett. It might be Thielen. It's kind of cool when you have a little bit of uniformity, you know, within, within guys, cause then everything looks similar. Um, but I say it's more just finding the strengths of the guys and, and just being flexible with, with playmakers. Are there any yeah. specific we'll things take a couple more questions. that you look for during this mini camp process? Big picture, really. I'm, I'm really trying to look for the, the culture of what we want at practice. I want guys to have fun. I want them to be focused, though, but also enjoy it. And I think what I've seen over the years is guys begin to show their personality more once they feel really confident about what we're doing. Still today, like, you know, somebody may go out the wrong side of the huddle to line up, you know? So those, those types of things, once those are kind of like ironed out, then I like to see their personality show up. I like to see the players take over how they break their, their own group huddles, you know, and they have their handshakes and they have their sayings. And I love to see that part of it. Um, 
love to see hustle in between drills, you know, and we don't have a lot of drills right now. So there's only really two or three transitions, but I'm looking for the right energy. The music's going not so loud where we can't hear each other, but they always listen to music when they do everything. So let's have music the whole time, you know? So um, I'm trying to feel that part, just like big picture from a coaching standpoint too. You know, we just don't, we don't need a lot of like walking and reading, you know, like put your script away, coach it, coach it, coach it, you know, like let's, let's have, you know, feedback every 30 to 40 seconds um, and really be engaged with guys. So I'm kind of, I kind of look for the, looking for those types of things. The guys that Mike mentioned, Hill, Eddie, and Chase on, are those injury yeah. situations? Or it's, it's private. Yeah. I, I really want, I don't really want to talk about that. You know, I just more so just um, really just commend the guys that are here especially for me being my, you know, as a first time head coach, trying to instill culture. So it means a lot to the guys that are here. One more, one more question. Okay. We're, we're gonna take one more question from this gentleman right here. The last one. Coach, how, how difficult is it for you professionally to pay attention to the whole team? You've been so hyper focused yeah. on offense. You're, you're going back and forth uh, practice from drills, but is that a challenge for you to get everywhere? Yeah, that's challenge number one for me. So I think there's goals, there's focus goals for everybody in practice. And I try to ask the players, have three things you want to get better at today. And so great question. So for me, it's like, how much can I see, you know, and today was hard because we're ironing out cadence stuff, you know, Corbett's in there working with Bryce, a lot of communication stuff going on. And I'm like, really hyper focused on just getting the, the place snapped and everything on time. Um, but that is a challenge for me to, to continue to ch try to back my focus up so I can see, okay, start of the offensive play as it flows. What was the defensive call as well? Okay, it's this, the safety should be coming down here, you know, and trying to expand my focus. I'm nowhere near where I would like to be um, on that. So yeah, big challenge. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.